will be uh, Nina Barginson from Kentic. Uh, she's the Director of Technical Evangel Evangelism at Kentic, where she draws on her long experience as a peering coordinator and network engineer. And prior to Kentic, Nina was at Subspace and um, played a key role in securing the delivery of Netflix streaming traffic in the EMEA region. So please join me in welcoming Nina to the stage. Oh, thank you. Hi. Uh, Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, BGP incidents this time. I just I was thinking about how to begin my talk, and I realized that I'm doing it a little bit backwards because I was here a year ago and talking about our KPI and the um, how far we are with the deployment. And this is a little bit a teaser or a talk that talks about why we should do that, so I'm doing it backwards, but you get this now. Also, I have to say, for you, those of you who are at EPF, this is going to be a repeat. I'm sorry about that, but uh, I hope you can uh, enjoy it anyways. It's a history, uh, so we will be looking at past events. Um, and again, I was already presented, so we can skip that one. Uh, and then, as last year, this talk is based on the work of my great colleague, Doug Maduri. Um, it is based on his research, and um, he is a man who knows what's going on on the internet. So um, you, if you want to follow him, here are the ways to do that. Um, so what we'll be focusing on is BGP incidents, but what do we mean when we talk about that? Well, the most common ways of uh, the, the most two common incidents are hijacks and route leaks. And we're going to go in this presentation, I'm going to go through what do we mean with each and then give you an example of a time in history where the internet was disrupted by one of these uh, um, incidents. These are the sort of overall broad definitions that you can find if you Google them. Um, but for this presentation, we're going to be talking about three different um, uh, definitions uh, that we will be focusing on. So one is the origination errors. So basically, you have some IP space, and it is originating somewhere else where it should be. Um, and what happens then? Well, traffic goes to the wrong destination. Then we have AS path errors. So not just originating, it's still originating where the space belongs, but it is going uh, on a different path than it should. So some people are inserting their ESN in the AS path. So what we do here is the traffic will go to its final destination, but it will take a reroute, and maybe or maybe not, things will happen with the traffic on that reroute. And finally, we're going to talk a little bit about IP squatting. Which is, which is the situation where there are unused space. There are still people who have space they are not announcing on the internet right now. And people can then announce that and use that space for a short period of time and then withdraw it again. So we'll be looking at what they do and why they will do that. Um, I also realize there's a lot of people in the room who will know all of this. Uh, but just for clarity's case, let's talk about what it is we mean. So here is the origination error. You have, oh, this was the issue we had before. So you have AS1 owns the prefix. It's a slash 22. It's sent on to AS3. But AS2 is announcing a slash 24 from the same space. And the traffic, due to how BTP works, will then go to AS2. Uh, for all the IP uh, addresses in that space, if we did not have any protection going on. And the most famous one incident of that was back in 2008, uh, when YouTube was hijacked by Pakistan Telecom. So just how many here were working on the internet at that time and remember what happened? Yeah, me too. It was a fun night. I, I remember my son, Mom, Mom, the internet is not working. 
because he couldn't see his YouTube videos. So, for those of you who don't know, it was, uh, there was content on YouTube that the government in Pakistan did not feel their citizens should be able to watch. So they issued an order, you must black hole the traffic to YouTube. And Pakistan Telecom did that. Unfortunately, they leaked, so they did it by deaggregating and uh, placed a null route uh, for the deaggregated prefixes in the, inside that network. That's okay, they can do that if they want to. But a mistake meant that they were leaking the deaggregated prefixes to their upstream provider, and their upstream provider was propagating the prefixes to the rest of the world. So most of the world was trying to go to Pakistan Telecom when they were requesting content for YouTube. Not a great situation. So, yes, the classical. And you can read more about it. Uh, we've added links to, um, to all the long um, explanations about what was going on. Uh, eventually it got fixed. They got hold of PCCW so they could start filtering the customer. And everybody else on the internet was sitting down and thinking, hmm, this filtering, prefix filtering on the edge of our networks might be a good idea. I remember myself starting generating a lot of prefix filters. A more recent um, um, example is uh, Twitter in 2022, uh, when we had the invasion um, last year of Ukraine again. The purpose was inside a specific region or country, we wanted to shut down, or they wanted to shut down a service, this time Twitter. And again, um, unfortunately, the deaggregated prefixes were leaked, but this time the impact was much smaller, and this was due to our KPI. So what we see here on this slide is the propagation of the deaggregated prefixes. So instead of in 2008, where they were propagated all over the world because most of us did not filter on our peering edges um, and one provider did not filter their customer, this time we only saw the deaggregated prefixes at, at around 3% of the, of the um, um, on our probes, BGP probes all over the world. And this is RAGU data that we are using for this analysis. And this is because um, the prefix was um, had a ROA. So all of the big networks who are dropping uh, their RKPI uh, invalids meant that the propagation was less, so the effect was less severe. So yay. Um, the other example was the AS path error. Let's see where we are at time. Good. Um, we have prefix originated AS1, um, and it is propagated. And then we have AS4 over there is inserting themselves as the next step in the AS path instead of uh, AS3 where the, it is coming from. Again, a typical misconfiguration error. Somebody is fat fingered. Um, and the example of that one is um, LNG in uh, 2019. What happens here is that Cloudflare has a, a slash 20, and they're announcing that to the internet, to their upstream transit. And then we have LNG who is using a BGP optimizer. And BGP optimizers work by deaggregating prefixes to make sure that they direct the traffic to the best uh, provider. LNG can use that. They were using this service. That's fine. But somebody, again, made a mistake in the network configuration. So they ended up by uh, announcing the deaggregated uh, Cloudflare prefix to their other upstream provider, Verizon. So what happened then? Well, Verizon is a quite well-connected network, so they were propagating these deaggregated prefixes to all of their connected, both their peers and their customers, 
and everyone would then get the more specifics from Verizon, who would send the traffic to LNG, which is not a great way to reach Cloudflare. So again, a disruption that was um, felt quite a bit um, on the internet. I skipped this slide because it's in the wrong order. I should have fixed that. Because this is the original um, gangster, is the American term, of BGP incidents, which happened all the way back in 1997. Anybody remember that one? Ah, that's less. Ah, so, uh, we thought that a couple of the gray hairs here would remember it. So I remember people talking about it, in particular in 2008 when the YouTube happened. Um, but here we just we basically had a bug inside a small network in the U.S. and they deaggregated the whole routing table to slash 24, and then they um, uh, sent those uh, to the rest of the internet. And that, because of how software were, we had a lot of ghost routes all over, so it was quite a big incident. I'm not gonna go into details on that one, but again, you can find a link in the presentation if you wanna read about the first big one. Finally, the last um, issue that we have been looking at is the IP squatting. So we have some unused, um, unused space and uh, an AS decides randomly to use that one, announces it to the internet and people who get the, the space doesn't, if they have no protection about it, they will just propagate it to the rest of the internet. So this space, it can be used, lives on the internet for a while and then it might be um, withdrawn again. An example of that one was BitCanal, who were using um, this slash 18 for quite a long time. And they were using it for uh, spamming uh, because if they were using fresh space that nobody was using, they would not be on any list uh, from spam house and whatnot. So all of their spam mails would get to their recipients and then they could, if, they did then just got arrest, um, registered, they could start using more and more of the space. Eventually, Cogent disconnected this customer because they did not stop. Um, and then they continued to use it to um, some of the space still uh, via their other uh, providers. So, summarizing, what are the impacts of these disruptions? Well, traffic doesn't go where it should go. Services doesn't work. Uh, we can misdirect uh, where information is going. And interception and stealing of the people's space and the propagation of spam. Plus, a thing we didn't talk about, but um, you can cause just in general instability to the BGP uh, protocol. We've also seen these methods being used in attacking of cryptocurrency services. I'm not gonna go into those, but I will refer to a blog post that um, Doug did and some also larger reports, um, which is quite interesting at what level a BGP hijack can be used in such an attack. Um, and it happens, and it happens a lot. Here's uh, some statistics from, uh, from Doug's um, work where we see high potential hijacks or BGP leaks in general. Um, so, as I was talking about last year, what can we do? Well, the tool that can be used right now is our PKI um, route origination validation. So create ROAS protect your space, even the space you're not using, so it cannot be squat, and then rejection of the invalid routes. And again, we want to call out uh, ManRS for the great work that they're doing, and I think they will be talking later today as well. Um, as we were talking last year, we are making a lot of progress, and we see how the propagation of prefixes um, who are invalid is way, way, way less today 
than uh, valid and not found uh, prefixes. And that goes for both protocols. And all the resources. Questions? Comments? Anybody else has a great incident they want to call out? So we have some time for some questions. Anyone got a question for Nina? All right. We'll, we'll make the coffee break in time then. Please join me in thanking Nina for a fantastic presentation. Thank you.